I kind of look at it as it's like a risk. It's a very high risk for not much reward, you know? Like in terms of if you're out on the streets and you're shot in or whatever, then the risk is jail and the reward is money. Mm. Those two things, even though some people would say jail is never worth, like it's never worth the money or whatever, those two things are at least in a similar kind of scale to each mm. other. Like if you go jail for money, it kind of adds up. Mm. Do you know what I mean? But when I looked at it properly, the risk I was taking for the reward I was getting, it's nowhere near, bro. Like there's no kind of money or anything mm. that can justify the risk I was taking yeah. as a Muslim. Do you understand? Knowing what my beliefs are, knowing what happens if I die in that state, you know? One of the brother tells me, yo, I just went to the masjid to pray. Bro, guess who they're burying today? Mm. Mama. Said, yeah, they're burying him. The same brother, the same kid. I said, what? Yeah, he go, bro, he's dead. I said, what do you mean he's dead? He go, bro, he got murdered. Mm. He got stabbed in the neck, bro, in his own block, bro. bro. He, he's, he's a big man on his block, you know? Mm. His same block, he got stabbed in the neck, he's dead, bro. Like, what am I going to do if I start practicing now? Like, in terms of money, like, what am I going to do? Like, you're, you're trying to get money by running away from the salah. You say, bro, I, mm. I, I'm, I need to get paid so I can't pray my Jummah prayer, bro. I need to yeah, get, yeah. you know, I'm sorry, I have to miss out these prayers. I can't go to the masjid and pray because mm. i got work to do. But, bro, you're running away from one who's got the, who's got the risk there. And my friend just woke me up like, yo, you're on a chance. You get it? He was like, you're, on, you're climbing up from like 30. Then I remember oh, I was on yeah. 30, just went down to like 20. No way. Yeah, then it went to like 17, then lower. I'm not gonna lie, that's the bit I was just scared the most. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah, amma ba'd, assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Brothers and sisters, welcome back to another episode of MXP, the Muslim Experience Podcast. Today we're joined by two very special guests. We've got brother Suleiman, previously known as Solo. And we've got brother Muhammad, previously known as Bonkers. How you doing, my brothers? Alhamdulillah. 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 Very happy to see you guys here, man. Alhamdulillah. So, Suleiman, we're going to get started with you, inshallah ta'ala. Mm. How you doing, Suleiman? Alhamdulillah, I'm doing well. <laughs> Everything's good. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. How are you? Well, I'm good, I'm good, Akhi, man. I'm feeling the lights, Alhamdulillah. It's nice, Allah. huh? Very nice. The vibe is nice. Oh, Allah, Alhamdulillah, man. The brother's putting a bit of work, man. Shout out yeah. to Faisal Chowdhury, actually. You know, he actually is the one who gave me the idea for the for the lights. He came to me, he said to me, if you want me to set up the studio, I'm going to tell you now, yeah? Mm. You just got to listen to me. Mm. As in, you're going to think it's mad. Mm. But when it's up, trust me, you're going to appreciate it. Vibes. I said, mm. bro, you know what it is? I'm here to hear and obey, bro. You're, you're mm. the podcast king, you know what I'm saying? You're the podcast prince. Mm. Nah, shout so out he Faisal. said to me, boom. So I got it up, man. Mm. Alhamdulillah. Like, one of the ways we start off the podcast, usually we just reminisce over how we met. Mm -hmm. First time how we met. Oh, so, first time we met was sorry. at the Janaza. At the Janaza, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, my, uh, my, my auntie, yeah, Khalid, yeah. Yeah. Kills, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, when he's um, his mom uh, passed, uh, passed away, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless her I mean. and give her Jannah, inshallah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, yeah, and you came and you uh, gave the reminder there. First yeah. time I saw you there, was the like, first yeah. time, and you came with a group of brothers, yeah, and you gave a powerful talk. I don't want to praise it too much, but uh -huh. you gave a powerful talk, and I was just like, rah. And that's just when I started practicing, I remember. Yeah, so that's the first time I met you. You know, I actually think I met you before that, maybe slightly, or maybe just slightly after that. Like, we had an event and you were talking to I think Hussein Street Adin outside the, it was in Southall, you know, a little wedding venue. Was that before it? I think that was before it, you know. I think that was when you that, just when when um when uh, Abdurrahman Hassan and yeah. all of the other brothers was doing a talk. It was either one or the other. I think that was yeah. That was before it. That was before it, that yeah? That was before it. Yeah, yeah you're right. But we never spoke though. We never spoke Yeah, properly. we never spoke. Yeah. But, was, but that's why I saw, I would just say salam to each other. Yeah. Saying, he, to me, he, said, he said to me, ah, you know, brother, like, you know, he's a rapper, you know, or he's, he's big on his rap take. I was like, that really? Was, he's yeah. like, yeah, but he's trying to change his life, come to Dean, everything. I was speaking to him. I said, Allah, I'm a badik, man. Yeah, that, that, I guess that. obviously we were close, didn't we? We was going to the yeah. same masjid, yeah, same exactly. classes. Yeah. I'm saying, Alhamdulillah, we linked up, done Umrah, man. Alhamdulillah, Allah is beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Today, obviously, we met another beautiful brother. We've got mm. brother Muhammad. Mm. Mm. How you doing, my brother? Alhamdulillah, bro. I'm good, man. How are you? Wallah, I'm good, man. I'm good, Alhamdulillah. So, just for the people, I'm sure most people are aware of both of you, but just for those who may not be aware, obviously, both of these brothers, they used to be involved in the music game. Mm. And, um, Obviously, they're very well known, you know what I'm saying? Moving in the same kind of circles that, you know, most people. So, if you, would you like, would you feel comfortable mentioning or? I don't, 
Uh, yeah. I don't mind. Yeah, just you know, mentioning in terms of like um, like as in like what what what, what level you was at because I was just trying to show them you yeah. left it behind. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, no, I don't mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Just, oh, yeah so like fine. obviously, if you explain like how your music career was going for you, um, it was at what point that you left? Okay. Yeah. Um. Well, to be honest, I would say I was I was quite deep in. It wasn't just a like um like the one video at a time kind of thing. Mm. It was just the thing where it was like, um, you know, just having your own studio. Mm. When you get to them kind of levels. It's so you actually had your own studio. Yeah. So mm -hmm. when you get to that kind of level where production's you high, production's high. And, you know, nowadays, like people that's playing certain roles. That's when you're really deep in, mm. you know. So when you, way, yeah. like, way past the hobby <laughs> point, isn't it? Yeah. Because, you know, at the beginning, it starts with the whole like club, like whole playground kind of like mm. just you know it starts like that for mm. a lot of people but then when you leave school you. yeah, 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 yeah. little circle you get it like this guy's the, this guy's a sick guy you know mm -hmm. and stuff like that so after that it just kind of left everyone kind of stopped doing music but i carried on mm. you get it so then it just got to that stage where it was like like i said to you earlier on it was just the fact of the thing that really driven me was the fact that people used to label me as like the best somali rapper mm. so like in the area it was like oh he's the hardest somali rapper mm. and i used to think to myself i'm not just a somali rapper i'm a rapper like respect <laughs> my you know what I'm i used to come with that kind of thing like mm. so i think that's what kind of driven me to kind of go that stage because mm. it was the thing where i i used to hate the whole fame thing like people knowing who you are like you get it so when it was a when, when it was a thing of like when it was a thing of like, you know, uh, 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 like videos dropping and then it getting big and stuff like that, I wasn't actually happy with that. Mm. I was like, oh my days, look what you just done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like yeah, I used to yeah, actually yeah. have that thought where I'd be like, look what, oh, look what you just done. Now you're just some bait guy. But then <laughs> yeah. I used to think to myself, oh, like I used to, I used to actually, but then afterwards, I, you know, as you're making music, you clock, there's always one that kind of gas mm. you. Oh, this is the one, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, this is one. That I'm, so the next thing you know, you kind of get gassed up, you shoot a video. Next thing you know, you've just done it again. Um. Now this is on like a half a million. Then you're going up and then things are just going up. So when it got to that stage, I remember um, just like, obviously my stories on YouTube and et cetera. Um, but when it just got to that stage of, you know, like when I dropped my first album, then it went on the charts. Was it top 10 or something? It was on the top 10 that day. Mm. Yeah, I remember I dropped it on. What's that day that everyone gets high? That's, what's that day? <laughs> well, I didn't even know about this nah, day. There's a, <laughs> nah, day. Nah, nah, there's actually 420. Oh, there's oh, a, oh, yeah, 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 there's yeah, a yeah, day yeah. that people actually get high. Yeah, what's four, what, four, 420. March? Nah, 4th of um, April, isn't it? Yeah, oh, I yeah, yeah, yeah. Like people smoke a lot of weed and that. Basically, yeah. 420 it's like is a weed day. day. It's like a yeah, weed day, yeah, yeah. national weed day. No way. I didn't yeah. even notice. <laughs> I didn't even notice. Now, yeah. you're going to see Imran down, man, going to the parks and like, four, and <laughs> <laughs> April the 20th, you're going to see Imran going to Hyde Park. Like, <laughs> just stop taking from random. Yo. You go to weed away. <laughs> yeah, so I remember on 420, I don't even know why, how that happened, but it, it was just scheduled for that day. Mm. So, Everyone you know, just high listen to you. Literally, I don't know what happened, but I remember when I was talking to like the, the guys, the, the people that I was working with, like we just dropped it on 420 and then I'm, I just remember me had, took a nap in the studio and my friend just woke me up like, yo, you're on a charts, you get it? He was like, you're on, you're climbing up from like 30. Then I remember no I was on 30, just went down to like 20. No way. Yeah, then it went to like 17, then lower. I'm not gonna lie, that's the bit I was just scared the most. Like that's the bit of my whole career, I was scared the most. So we, as in, you're telling me you actually had anxiety at this stage? Yeah, I had anxiety, I had anxiety because now I had, because I, I don't know how it was, but I always had that thought like, oh, you're going too far, man. Like you're taking this way too far, mm. you get it? So at that point I had anxiety like, oh, this is your life now. Mm. Like this is the start of your life. Like mm. this is what you're going to do till you die. You think it was too far to turn back? Yeah, and I thought it was way too far to turn back. But I've always got that thing in me like, no. No one can tell me it's too far to turn back. Do you get mm. it? But that's when, long story short, my sister sent me that video uh, uh, talking about, because I never had knowledge mm. of Islam, as in like, you know, if I turn back now, what, what's in store for me? Mm. What can what can be offered to me as a sinner? Mm. Yeah. A guy who's went that far, what is offered for me? I don't, I didn't, I didn't know, mm. yeah. you know? So as soon as that happened, and then um, my sister sent me that video, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless her. I mean. When she sent me that video, and it was to, it was about, uh, the, uh, it's, a, it's a surah, uh, surah al-Luqman. Yeah, wa minan nas yistri lahu al-hadith. As soon as I heard that, and, and you know, with the reciter reciting it. The and I about it, music, basically. The ayah about music, yeah. When he was talking about those who use m basically idle talk to mislead people from the path, there will be a humiliating, humiliating torment for them in hellfire. Mm. And I, I believe this Allah saying this. You mm. get it? It's all about belief. I believe this Allah is basically telling me, mm. you, 
Yeah, so they, you, whoever's, you're using this, like your, your way of speech to mislead up. Look, look, look what's going to be waiting for you, basically. Mm -hmm. Look what's going to be waiting for you. So I got, I literally started crying. From there, Alhamdulillah, my change started happening. And I'm here, man. Alhamdulillah, <laughs> Alhamdulillah still, you, you know, still you know, here. You know, before I come to Brother Muhammad, I just wanted to highlight something that you said there, which is very deep. So obviously, one, you know, sins are of two types from the angle that there's sins that are to you, that you only, that you only restrict to yourself. Yeah. And then there's sins that you do that where you also misguide other people as well. Mm. Do you understand? So the Prophet Isaiah Sam taught us that a person who does a good deed and directs someone to it, he gets the reward of everyone else who did the good deed without the reward being taken away from any of them. You see? Yeah. Now, the same way if you teach someone a bad deed, then you get the sin of everyone else who did that bad deed without the sin being reduced from them as well. So I remember when I started practicing, not really started practicing, but I started, you know, trying to come closer to the deed. Mm. And, you know, we used to like sell CDs, sell, yeah. sell, sell, sell mixtapes in like mm. Oxford Street and mm. this, that and the other and just move around. We used to just sell our CDs like that. So I was in Kingston one time, I was selling the CDs. I thought, you know what, let me try prayers. You know, you yeah. have moments that like we were yeah. talking about earlier where, you know, you come to the deed mm -hmm. and you fall off. So I must have gone to the masjid. I remember I had my CD in my hand and um, one of the uncles in the masjid, he told me, yo, you need to stop this, you know. I mm. said, why? It, Gave it to me hard. He said, every person who listens to this that you misguide is going to be on your neck, you know. Wow. So that scared the hell out of me. And that's, that's one of the reasons yeah. why I actually started giving that off because that. he told me the opposite is true. The way to yeah. erase all the evil that you wow. did and how you misguided mm -hmm. is by teaching them good now. Do you see? Mm -hmm. But you know what? Actually, this concept of misguiding people is big because you know, if you look in the Quran, Allah mentions this in so many places. You know, people have followers, people have fans, mm -hmm. people have people who listen to them. Allah mentions about what their fans will do on the day of judgment, what their followers will do. In Surah Al Ahzab, at the end, Allah said, People who used to be, who used to follow, the chiefs, the big people, the, the, the influences, the most influential people in the community, they said, We used to follow them. And they said, They misguided us from the path. Mm. So this guy, listen to this musician, he loves you now. These women, they love you now. Mm. They come to your shows, they love you now. They buy your CD, they love you now. They share it, they download it on Spotify, they love you now. But on the day of judgment, they're they say, blame you. Yeah, they say, Allah, they yeah. misguided us on the path. Yeah. And, they, 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 and, then, and then they say, Allah, they say, give this person a, 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 twice the punishment. Yeah. And a mighty curse. Mm. So I think, you know, people, I say, oh, we're out here, we do this for the fans, for the fans. For the, bro, you know what I'm saying? Fans, bro, on mm. a day of judgment, mm. they're going to say, Allah, this person misguided us. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They're not going to have any excuse on a day of judgment either. Exactly. But furthermore, the one who misguided them is not going to have any evil. But imagine now when you make Tob and you come back from that life. Yeah. Mm. Bro, you come back from when you're deep in. Like, you know what mm. I'm saying? There's some people who are trying to get there. But yeah. you're saying you're on the charts. Pan now Allah. you make Toba. Yeah. But you make Toba from a hard place. Mm. So you know what Allah does? He replaces all of that sin that you did into good deeds. Subhan and this is what I always try to tell the brothers. You know what yeah. the brother's saying, bro, I'm too deep into this. You don't know what I've done on the road. You don't know what I sold. You don't know you don't know it who don't I bagged yeah. up. You don't know what I've done. Yeah. But actually, there's an ayah in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the three major sins to worship another God besides him, which is eternity in the hellfire, to kill a person who you killed unjustly. Of course, any killing that doesn't go through Islamic court process is unjust. Obviously, I'm talking about capital punishment. Mm -hmm. things. Obviously, there's there's court for that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So just kill a person. Third thing is fornication. Allah says, if you do these things, yalqa athama. You're gonna be athama. Athama. Some of the narrations mentioned from Prophet Sallam is the lowest. It's a valley in hellfire that has what a well in it, mm -hmm. and it's the place where what some of the, some some of the salaf said what is where all of Allah's punishment comes to you together. So it's all three things It's a valley It has a well in it And the punishment of Allah Comes for these people mm. Allah said they're going to stay there For eternity But he makes an exception But it's one group of people That they worship other gods Besides Allah And they done murder And they fornicate with women mm. Allah says He's going to what He didn't say He's going to forgive them He says You Allah sayyatim hasanat He's going to exchange Their good deeds He's Afron, he's gonna exchange their bad deeds for good deeds. Ooh, to good deeds That's what I started Yahya to us. Yeah, the park that day. Yeah, he was telling us that in the park. Yeah. Like, imagine you go to yeah. currency exchange. Yeah. He gives yeah. you dollars, he gives you pounds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes your even he do, and he does that. That's why I wanted to bring both of you on because yeah, yeah. you 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 guys come from a life where what? 
you're already in it. You mm. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So money is there. If you want, women can be there. You know, respect is there. Reputation is there. Mm. So, Mohammed, Akhi, if you explain to mm. me, Akhi, bro, what, 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 is it, what is it like for you in your, in, in, in your journey? We spoke about it briefly before we started. <coughs> yeah, so, so my situation, it's kind of interesting what Suleiman was saying about how he would feel like, you know, you'd feel like anxiety every time you were getting towards like what you would have seen as a target at the mm. time. Mm. See, mine was kind of, it was... It was opposite in terms of I didn't feel anxious, but it was the same overall because it's like I would feel excited to hit these targets, mm. but in the back of my mind, I knew there was a time limit on what I was doing. Do you understand? Okay. So I wanted to hit these targets before I got out, do you know? So meaning like you always knew you wanted to get out of the music game? Yeah, always, always, because I've been Muslim a long time, you mm. know what I mean? A long time. And like I explained to you earlier, there's just different moments of like where I'm on where I'm on it where I'm focusing and then I kind of kept slipping back in and I realized eventually I could like the music is the thing that I had to let go of mm. in order for me to get on this journey and stay on it that's the only thing I like really really could not balance like there was no I used to try and balance it but it was unbalanced you know sometimes when you're doing a bit of this and a bit of that you think mm. you're balancing yeah but that's the most unbalanced thing ever mm. do you get me it's yeah. like a seesaw it's like yeah, you're either here mm. or you're here then you start feeling hypocritical mm. like i was praying five salah a day in february and then by april i could be back in the studio da -da 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 -da, you know what i mean and it's not balanced and that's me trying to balance but it's not what's balanced is kind of letting go of the music and then allowing myself to focus completely mm. on this and there's balance within this do you know what I mean? You, you know it's profound that you say that, yeah, because you see, there's a statement of uh, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, who's one of the most knowledgeable companions of the Prophet Isa, and he said, if you mm. wanted to know how the Quran so, came down, go to him. He, had, he was mm. an expert in the Quran. He mentioned that music it inherits hypocrisy in the heart. Right, okay. Because music, Quran, and music can't be in the heart at the same time. Mm -hmm. You can't have Iman. Which is Quran mm. And hypocrisy Which is kufr and Nifaq is a type yeah. of kufr In the heart At the exact same time So It's either one or the other Because mm. you see The Quran is the speech of Allah Music is the speech of shaitan mm. so Allah said mm. Allah said to shaitan mm. Like Like Bug terrify Whoever it is That you want to do voice, So yeah. with your voice mm -hmm. So the companions Of the Prophet Who were learning the Quran From the Prophet They explained this ayah Abdullah ibn Abbas said that I is my music. The voice of shaitan is music. Mm -hmm. So then what happens is now a person is what? He's trying to say, let me do music and let me do my deen at the same time. Yeah. You see, one or two is going to overpower each other. Because yeah. even because because remember the speech of Allah, mm. the love for it can't be in your heart and the speech of the devil. Yeah. That's yeah. deep. If you know it's the speech of the devil yeah, coming yeah, in your heart at the same time. Yeah. It can't be there. And imagine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said what? He said, he said that, you know, shaitan, in that same verse, says to terrify whoever it is that you want to terrify with your voice. And Allah says, take, you know, like your army, shaitan, take your army. And, and you know, you're, Allah tells us that he's going to share with the people who listen to his to his voice, i.e. the music, he's going to share with them and their wealth and their children. Mm. Why? Because you know, now you make money from music. Mm. So now what? You made money from the voice of shaitan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now, so now, who, now who's your business partner? Mm -hmm. Your business partner is the devil. Yeah. You take his product. And we do business now. He said to mm -hmm. me, I've got some laptops in run. I've got the investment. You sell it. So Shaitan comes and says, let me bring you my voice. Mm -hmm. Let me bring you my voice. You sell it. And we split the money. Well, for him, wealth is something else. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? He wants to see people misguided. Mm -hmm. And not just that he shares it in your children as well. Like he's got, he's, he's, because, because that music, what's, what's it going to do now? It's going to lead you to what? To fornicate. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. you, might, you, might, you, 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 you might fornicate with... With, with many people And this happens And that happens And you know what I'm saying Then your children are born And what happens with your children Your children live onto this music thing And they become misguided after, As mm -hmm. in Bro it's just It takes over your life And the devils are all around you Imagine the army of shaitan Is around you So it's You, you can't do, Every time you want to pray Something's holding you back Yeah Because they're whispering in your ear But then opposite you, When you read the Quran What did the Prophet say? He said, "وَمَا اجْتَمَعَ قَوْمٌ فِي بَيْتٍ مِنْ بُيُوتِ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلِيَتْ هُنَا كِتَابَ اللَّهِ وَيَتَدَارَسُ لَهُ بَيْنَهُمْ إِلَّا نَزَلَتْ عَلَيْهِمُ السَّكِينَةُ إِلَّا وَحَفَّتْهُمُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ إِلَّا نَزَلَتْ عَلَيْهِمُ السَّكِينَةُ وَغَشَّتْهُمُ الرَّحْمَةُ وَحَفَّتْهُمُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ وَذَكَرَهُمُ اللَّهُ عِنْدَهُ فِي قُوَّةِ الْمَسْجِدِ أَنْ يَسْتَعْرِضُ الْقُ
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends his mercy down on you. Mm-hmm. His peace and he envelops you in his mercy and then the angels spread their rings out. So now mm-hmm. you've got angels around you. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you read the speech of Allah, you've got the angels. When you listen mm-hmm. to music, you've got the devil. You know what I'm saying? But you can actually, it's like, I can physically feel the difference though. Like, mm-hmm. you know, like, it's a physical thing too. Mm-hmm. I can feel it, bro. Like, it's so weird. Like, it's not even weird. Like, it should be expected. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But it's like, until you really make certain changes. Say for example, with the music, trying to chase that <coughs> is like a never ending cycle yeah. of mm. just chasing, 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 chasing. You're trying to chase the next thing. And then because all the all the excitement is so short lived, not just within the music, within all of your desires, what you're surrounded by, mm. everything that comes along with that, it's all so short lived, bro. Mm. There's no long lasting fulfillment. So you could want to hit this target the moment you hit that target, you don't sit there for not even five minutes and take it in. It's like the next one now. You need mm. the next thing and the next thing. And you don't even enjoy it. Bro, you don't get to enjoy none of it. You know what I mean? Like for me anyway, like you don't enjoy it because it's constant pressure of trying to evolve, trying to move forward, trying to grow, trying to grow. And you're not realizing that you're not growing. You're actually staying stagnant because no matter what target you're trying to hit, you're using the exact same method mm. every time. So it's like staying in like, I compare it to like, Imagine you're in school and you're free, but then next year, your next birthday, you go back to your free again. And every year you get older, but you're still in your free playing that's with true. crayons, bro. Yeah, that's true. Like you don't, you're getting older, but you don't get to demonstrate your, you any of your evolve, growth. Basically, yeah. Because all you have to do is come and play with these crayons again next year. Mm. Now you're 16 and you're free. You know what I mean? So in Around analogy, the same people. In that analogy, what is the crayons is the music. The crayons is the music for me because it's something that's so simple to do. You see mm-hmm. in Islam now, Music, I felt like one of the, like if there's levels to it, when it comes to like what you can do and what you know about music. And I, I definitely felt like I wasn't nowhere near the bottom of mm. that. I felt like I was somewhere, do you know what I mean? In mm. terms of how good you are and mm. this yeah. and that and everything else. Mm. Now in Islam is like, like a baby again. Like, like mm. he, teach me how to do this. Like mm. teach me that. And it's something I might have learned 10 years ago, but it's like, Okay, how do I like, how do you say this? How do you say that? And it's, it brings a different level of humility to you. And now without the ego, because there's a lot of ego involved in the music stuff mm-hmm. as well. You know, yeah. like my ego was crazy. It might not have made me like a horrible person, like walking around and looking down on people, but ego affects you in different ways. Mm-hmm. Like I couldn't go to the shop without feeling like I had something nice on. Like, do you know what I mean? Little things like that. But now when that ego is removed, it's like, I feel... I find joy asking one of my brothers to teach me something. Do you know what I mean? Brother, like, I'm having a bit of trouble with this, like, or, do you know what I mean? Little things, because the reaction that I get is so pure and so beautiful, and I just know it's for the sake of Allah. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's not a burden. You see, in other scenarios, like, before I could be somewhere, I could be studio or whatever, get home, and I'm feeling anxious, like, oh, why did I say that at that time? Why did I say that to that person? Mm. They're probably thinking this, like, yeah. after I'm just chilling with the brothers, I get home, I just think, oh, that was amazing what he said. You know how he was talking earlier on, I'll get home and ponder on that. It's like, a, it's good thoughts, you know, but just to kind of wrap up, like, the whole music experience for me, what I realise is that, like, alhamdulillah, this is just how I know that Allah loves me, bro, is that every single time I would go forward, I would, something would kind of, Go back every time. So, if I had a big success, I'd have a big setback. Mm. If I had a small little thing, there'll be a small little thing, like maybe something that seems kind of insignificant, but like a show might get cancelled. Mm. Then I have a big success, and there's a big setback. And it's like, without these setbacks, I would have, I might have been so far gone that it's like, if I had mansions and Ferraris and all of those kind of things off of this. Mm. I still believe I would have ended up like, you know, saying at some point I'm a Muslim, what am I doing? But it probably would have been harder. It probably would have took longer. Mm. So I feel like it's the mercy of Allah to put these things in my path. I'm trying to, and it, and, and it got to a point where it's like, how many signs from Allah can I ignore? Mm. Mm. Every time I go forward, I go back. And then I'm like, no, nah, like, cool, I'm gone again. And then, and it's like blatant. It's like, you know what I mean? It's yeah, blatant. Yeah. It's like, every, I'm just doing this, trying to chase this. And Allah say no. It's and I'm just like, okay, like how many times can I ignore this? You know what I mean? That's that's what it was for me. 
Subhanallah. Mm. Wow. You know, it is a lot. A lot of people don't take heed as well. Like, see right now, just just you taking heed of the signs in yeah. and within itself is a blessing, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a lot of people that go through a lot of situations. Like, I know guys that's been stabbed, mm. shot, jail, come back out. Like, literally, they've lost everything. Gone back to start, start, scratch, start from scratch. Yeah. Their parents have died. Everything they've seen, death in front of. I've seen. I know people like this, and 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 you know these signs have come to them. They still that like, go past it. Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say? It's so like you, a resilience, isn't it? Just exactly, trying to fight. Yeah. Well, I found that in myself though. It mm. was I was trying to be resilient and fight through. Then it it kind of became part of my story. Like mm. the underdog, he coach through adversity and yeah. fights through it. Yeah. I'm fighting through what I think is adversity and it's the mercy of Allah. Exactly, bro. yeah. And I'm trying to wow. fight through it. Do you understand? Wow, that's yeah. so profound. That's, it's mad, bro. Well, like, that's mad. actually so profound. You know, you know why? Because sometimes Allah is sending you signs. Yeah. And, and you know these people, they listen to all this motivational speech. Yeah, right, yeah. right, right. Like, right, you know, right, you right, fight yeah. through it. I'll, yeah. You know, mm. Get stabbed, get yeah. up, get shot, get up, go jail, come out. Whatever up, you do, get back up, go again. Yeah. You know what it is? That's the thing is that you see, People don't have no, they don't have no parameters to know what's right or what's wrong. Mm -hmm. You have the Quran and Sunnah, and you you know what's right and what's wrong. So you can kind of it will help you to interpret the events in your life. Right, Maybe right. there's a sign from Allah yeah, is trying yeah. to show me something. You know, like it's a blessing in yeah. itself to be able to mm. acknowledge that. And yeah, mm -hmm. bro, I, I I believe that Allah knows best. Only Allah mm -hmm. knows the unseen. But that probably is, inshallah, a sign that Allah does mm -hmm. love you mm -hmm. because you know, as I mentioned earlier, as I was saying to you guys, like you know, when you deep it. There were people that were like, like the Prophet's uncle, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his mm. uncle, Abu Salam Talib, Salam. Mm. who was a man who actually That's defended true. the religion of Islam. Mm. And he done more for Islam, more than probably any of us will ever do. You know why? Because he actually defended the Prophet and helped him and supported mm. him. Even though he didn't believe in Islam. Mm -hmm. Yet he never got guided to Islam. Mm. But you and me did. Yeah. So, and, the, and, and what? The Prophet was making da'a for him. He's begging Allah. Yeah, guided, yeah. But, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Allah didn't see in his heart what Allah saw in yours. That's the, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Allah saw something in your heart, so he guided you to it's it. the mercy of Allah, bro. Wow. But it's even, it's like, I had this arrogance here where I never knew it was arrogance at the time, but like I mentioned earlier, I used to say, look, I'm going to do music up until this age and yeah. then I'm going <laughs> to stop doing music. I'm going to jump on my dean. Nah, but real. you know what I was trying to do? Stuff for Allah. I was trying to get the money, stack up the money, you know, but I weren't, remember, I weren't, my man was low at this point though, mm. but so, but I still had a bit there where I knew one day, inshallah, I'm going to stop this. Mm. So where I'm in this world, I'm justifying it like, I'm only going to do this until this point, I'm going to get the money, get all this from it, leave, jump on Dean. Yeah. All this around money, like yeah. you know what I mean, like stuff for like that was what I thought I was gonna do, and it's like, you know, for me it, it was like a like a constant kind of battle to try and, but I don't want to. No, it's weird because I weren't. It's not the whole time I was conscious of Allah. Mm. Not the whole time. It's not like I had this plan and the whole time. There was times I was lost, bro, like lost in that world. Yeah. But then I would come back to the thought of one day I'm gonna get out, you know what I mean? But it's an arrogance because who like, this is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's uncle. In, that, in those surroundings that he was in, <coughs> he didn't even get granted enough time to come to Islam. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Wow. And I was in the studio thinking, I got another five years of this and then yeah, like, yeah. How, who was to say? Look at that. Who was to say that I would even make it that far? Do you know what I mean? It's the mercy of Allah that I could be saved from so, like from there, from in from that position I was in, I could be saved. Allah could come and save me. You know what you, I mean? You know, you know what's profound about that. There's a incident at the time of the Prophet Isa Sam. There was a poet, a very famous poet in Mecca, and uh, he one day got fed up, and he said, "You know what, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said he's right." So he said to the people, "I'm going. I'm going to Medina. I'm going to the city of the Prophet." Mm. I'm going to accept Islam. I'm going to join him. So the people said, Rah, okay, this is, <coughs> you know, a poet them times is like a celebrity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. saying that's like your, 
He's like a star. A, yeah, it's your star. Mm. And then when a star leaves and he goes and joins the other team, yeah. it's like someone leaving Man City, joining Man yeah, Arsenal or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Kicking yeah, off, it's kicking off. <laughs> of course, this is a greater example because yeah. he's joining the Prophet Ali. So Salam. 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 This is more than just football. Mm. You know what I'm saying? This is Islam and Kufr. So they said we have to think of a way mm. to convince him to not go. Yeah. They said, yo, you know, Muhammad, he doesn't, his religion doesn't allow people to sleep around with women. Mm. He said, you know me, I'm an old man <laughs> He said, I had my time mm. I don't even care like that anymore They said, rather women didn't get him Okay The Arabs used to drink a lot of alcohol They were mentioned that there was not a single table Where they sit together Except alcohol was being served mm. <coughs> So they said, yo, you know Muhammad He doesn't even allow alcohol That one got to yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. You know, some brothers mm. are they need but they don't realise it. You tell them, bro, you know you're addicted, isn't it? Mm. He said, nah, bro, I can leave the weed any time. He said, do <laughs> yeah. it then, but you can't leave it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, he was like, what? They hit him where it hurts, basically. They hit him where it hurts. Mm. So he said, yo, he said, okay, if that's the case, he said, for the next year, I'm going to drink. I'm going to get all of my drink out of my system. I'm going right. to drink, 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 so I get it out of my system. At the end of the next year, I'm going to go join the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He died in that year. He never made it. Yeah. How people wow. like that. Yeah. Imagine how many people in the graves right now that had the intention of repenting tomorrow. Like yeah. saying, oh, next week I'm going to do that. But then now you're in your grave. Like, there's no there's no turning back. Mm -hmm. like, you know, you, you know on just, just to kind of mirror that story, mm. to show you how deep it is that, you know, it definitely can come at any time. Because people think, oh, these are stories from before, even though they're authentic stories. But mm. I'll tell you something that happened to me two, 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 two and a half, three years ago. I, I was in a mission. You know the matching in a mission program yeah. with you? yeah. In West London So it's in Ramadan And one kid comes up to me After Salah Kid meaning obviously He was a grown man He was like 23, 24 at the time yeah, He's a big man Yeah so mm -hmm. Obviously me I'm old yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so he comes to me He says yo You recognise me I look at him I said nah bro Don't recognise you at all Obviously I didn't say it in a rude way I said yeah. you know No okay I don't recognise you You mentioned his name to me Straight away I clocked to you was like he was the first kid I ever gave that or two. You know when I started practicing? Yeah. The first yeah. kid I took out of the masjid, I made him stay at my house. I remember he stayed a whole Easter break one time. You know the Easter holidays that we have? He stayed a whole Easter break at my house. Well, not the whole, but most of it. Was with him, taking him out, getting him food, advising him. But then this kid, obviously I left the area. He just started trapping, bro. He was just, he was doing the most actually in the ends. Wow. So now look what happened. He said to me, bro, I'm done. He goes, I got stabbed a few months ago. Mm. You know, I'm just, I'm done. I'm done with this life. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I want to change. I said, bro, this Ramadan, you spend... <coughs> <coughs> he said, this Ramadan, you're spending it with me. I said, you're spending it with me. So I took him with me everywhere. We even went to one masjid where we pray in North London. And this masjid now, interesting because they were praying the whole night. Mm. They weren't praying like a small prayer. So mm. I remember even halfway through the night, I got a bit worried. I thought, you know, that first time coming to pray, it might be a bit hard for him. You know, mm. I, I I just clocked that this is a serious prayer they're praying here. They're only praying a long prayer. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like the Prophet will pray from Isha, he'll Sorry, pray to what? Fajr. So no. this masjid, yeah. they'll pray the whole night. Yeah. Have a little break in the middle of like, maybe like what, 50 minutes and then before thing, uh, before iftar, they, uh, before Suhur, they will stop. So it's a long prayer. So halfway through, I thought, right, oh, you know what? Let me check up on him. I went back, I checked. But he's in his zone. Mm. He's in his zone He's like no 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 I'm good I'm good I'm good I'm good I'm good Cut long so short I met him that Ramadan A couple of times This that and the other One of the brothers told me In the last 10 nights He saw him as well He was crying in the message He was begging Allah For forgiveness Toba. So I must have left the country now Imagine I left the country I must have sent him a message How you doing bro I haven't heard from you for a minute No response A few weeks later I get a phone call and I'm not in the UK now mm. One of the brothers tells me Yo I just went to the message to pray Bro guess who they're burying today mm. I said, yeah, they're burying him. The same brother. The same kid. I said, what? Yeah, he go, bro, he's dead. I said, what do you mean he's oh. dead? He go, bro, he got murdered. Mm. He got stabbed in the neck, bro, in his own block, bro. bro. He, he's, he's a big man on his block, you know. Mm. His same block, he got stabbed in the neck. He's dead, bro. I said, I didn't even hear about this. But mm. you know, Allah, the night I text him, was that the, the night, night he, he got murdered. Wow, mm. look at that. Now, here's the thing. Allah. Like, this kid, had he not changed his life a month and a half before, mm. he would have died maybe with drugs in his pocket. Look at that. He yeah. maybe would have died doing the maddest thing. Maybe he might have been busting a shot and an angel of death comes and takes his soul. 
but he died after making tawbah. Inshallah, Allah accepts it. His heart became clean, inshallah. And you know what he died, Akhi? They said he died saying, La ilaha illallah. SubhanAllah. And as you know, the Prophet said, Man kana akhiru la ilaha Whoever his last statement is La ilaha illallah, he will enter paradise. Mm. And you know what's shocking here, Akhi? To show you Allah, how deep the mercy of Allah goes. This is a benefit that I took from my Shaykh just a couple of days ago. He said something powerful. You know the hadith of the Prophet said, Actions are according to their intentions. Yeah. So a person is rewarded according to their intention. They're not mm. rewarded, rewarded according to the action. Because mm. he only started practicing for a month and a half, maybe mm. two months. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if he dies on that, inshallah, he's going to get eternity in. His intentions. He's going to get eternity in paradise. Mm. So now a person will think, right, it doesn't even make sense. Like a man lived his whole life selling drugs. Two months he patterns up. Mm. Inshallah, of course, this is, I mean, obviously we have good assumptions that Allah will have mercy mm. on Obviously, only Allah knows the unseen and who really makes it to paradise mm. or not. So, but obviously we have good we have good hopes and we, and we hope that Allah will accept it from him, right? Mm. So now imagine mm. if he is from those people, he was only on Dean for two months, bro. Two months. He only actually prayed for two months, bro. But because of that, he can get a turning in paradise. You know why? Because the intention mm. is what you get rewarded for. As mm. in, my, in, his intention was that Allah, if you let me live for a thousand years, I'm going to be on this. If you let me live for a million years, if you let me live forever, Allah, I'm going to be on this. He died upon that, basically. He died yeah, upon yeah, that. Yeah. Even though all he did was two months. Wow. So a person might think, rah, bro, I've been living this maddest life, bro. You don't know what I've done. Yeah. But if you was to change today, and you, and, 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 I can look at this one companion. Mm. He what? He accepted Islam. He didn't even get to pray a single prayer. Mm. Like he come from kufr, mm. from disbelief. He didn't even get to accept the single prayer. The court to jihad came. Of course, they were jihad at that time. And he ran into the battlefield, but he died. He never made it out. Imagine, like he, he never even prayed a single prayer. Mm. Of course, if the time for prayer came, he would have prayed. Yeah, but yeah, the point yeah. is, he never even got a chance, chance to pray. To, yeah. He died as a martyr. Yeah. So he shows you like, the mercy of Allah. Allah. Allah doesn't care. About your past, he cares about you now. Mm -hmm. That's why you say it's it's not how you start the race, it's how you finish it. How you finish yeah. it. It's true. That's it. Subhanallah. It's yeah. a powerful story as well. Allah is deep, man. Very powerful, subhanallah. Uh, what I want to bring it to now, both you, inshallah ta'ala, yeah, is um the issue of money. Because obviously mm. I asked you earlier, I said, bro, um, like what's the thing that kept you there? Was it was it a passion for the music or was <coughs> it money? You mentioned mm. that pr previously, you know, it's the passion for the music, but eventually the money kicks in. Yeah. And obviously, you know, you mentioned you had other motivations, but yeah. you've seen that. You've seen the money is the thing that holds yeah. the brothers who are in this industry uh, back. Yeah. So if you could talk to me a bit about that, Akhi. Um, <clears throat> yeah, man, it's like it definitely starts out as just a passion. You know what I mean? Because no one don't really get paid at first. Mm. Like when you're a teenager rapping, I like, couldn't really like that. But um, what can I say? Look, it, it it's a thing where at a certain age, like when you're very young, you can afford to spend majority of your time on your hobbies. Mm. You know, like when you're a kid, you spend majority of your time playing around, playing with your friends, doing whatever you're doing. Do you know what I mean? And then you might go home and spend like a ten percent of your time on some homework quickly. Do you know what I mean? That's how I was anyway. As you get older, obviously the ratio has to change because you how you become more responsible. You have responsibilities. <coughs> life becomes more and more expensive. So music turned from a hobby into a career, and then it got to a point where I was happy enjoying doing music and it became a career. So then the mindset is, all right, I don't want to do anything else then. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So it actually makes you quite lazy. You know, it makes you quite lazy because you're doing something that you enjoy and you're getting paid. Do you know what I mean? So um, that became like, towards the end, that became my sole kind of motivation. Do you know what I mean? But there was a lot of like love for the music and, and all of that kind of stuff. But... Gradually, it just went from like more from love for the music to wanting to just earn a living, mm. you know. And um, I kind of look at it as it's like a risk. It's a very high risk for not much reward, you mm. know. Like in terms of if you're out on the streets and you're shotting or whatever, then the risk is jail and the reward is money. Mm. Those two things even though some people would say jail is never worth like, it's never worth the money or whatever. Those two things are at least in a similar kind of scale to each mm. other. Like if you go jail for money, it kind of adds up, do you mm. know what I mean? But when I looked at it properly, the risk I was taking for the reward I was getting, it's nowhere near bro. Like there's no kind of money or anything mm. that can justify the risk I was taking yeah. as a Muslim, do you understand? 
knowing what my beliefs are, knowing what happens if I die in that state, you know? Like, if I'm not, like you said, that brother was allowed to have at least maybe two months where he patterned up and got focused. Just knowing how it is if you die before, if you're not allowed that opportunity, it just made me, f it made it click straight away. Like, it, it couldn't be a billion pounds, bro. Like, the risk <laughs> is just not worth it. And I realised I was just playing a mad game with my life. Like, I'm risking, it's not like I'm risking jail, you know, I'm risking the punishment, bro. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm risking hellfire for a bit of money, a bit of fame, a bit of status, <clears throat> some opportunities. When in Jana, you have all the opportunities. You know what I mean? Um, all of that. And it's like, and it, it, it gave me a different level of peace in this world, mm. too. Because it made me realise what's necessary. Mm. The status, the fame, all of that kind of stuff. Like, it don't, it don't mean anything. And it doesn't even... They don't bring you anything either. They don't bring you anything. Like all the things you think it brings you are not actually even real. Mm. Do you understand? Not real. Like it's so, it's so superficial, so surface level. That's why I used to say when I got home after those kind of engagements and gatherings, I wouldn't feel anything or I wouldn't feel anything positive. I remember you saying that you used to just go back out. I had to go back out. So yeah, say for example, I was in like an environment, what was like, it was lit. There was a lot going on, right? It was like a show or something. I'd be doing my thing, I'd perform, I was in the studio, I'd make a song and everyone in the studio, you get all the all the love, like, yeah, that was hard, bro, that was sick, sick, sick. Everyone's rating it, everyone's rating it. When I got home from there, because that, that feeling of that euphoria that you feel at the time is so short-lived, mm. when I got home, I never had anything to hold on to. So it's like, I'm here, I'm feeling all this energy and all this love, then I go home and it's just me. And it's like, I haven't got anything. You know, if you go holiday and you come back and you're like, you can ponder over that holiday for the rest of your life, really. Mm. Thinking about, oh, that was nice. Or, you know, if you go to a wedding or certain things you do, mm. you can ponder and you can hold on to it. So it's not like you don't have to go to a wedding every week. You don't have to go on holiday every week. <laughs> you can, you know what I mean? You can spread it out. Yeah, yeah. But that was so superficial and so surface level that when I got home, I had nothing left. There was nothing left by the time I got home. So I'd go back on my phone and be like, yo, where's the man and we look doing? I go back out again. Cause I I wanna I want it to continue. I want a few more hours of this. Like, do you know what I mean? It's crazy, man. And now the opposite of when you meet the brothers. Remember how you told me yeah, that's the yeah, opposite yeah. of? So now it's like when I meet the brothers, it's like I'll be chilling, like an experience like this. I can go home and ponder on this for hours. Picking yeah. apart different like something you said. Remember, you said a lot in the room, you know. Mm. And I could take maybe even 30 seconds of that. Mm. And that would be enough for you to, to me yeah, to yeah. ponder. It's like this eternal thing of trying to seek knowledge, trying to mm. learn more. Mm. In that world, I felt like I hit my cap. Mm. Like I felt like Allah just kept, like this was my roof. That was the rooftop for me that I hit that. And I kept just trying to go through it and through it and through it and through it. And that was it. In this world, it's like never ending. It's like, it's like being a baby again, bro. Do mm. you know what I mean? I think of like how, see how I've learned English for my whole life and how I'm fluent. I want to just become fluent with Islam. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Inshallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make you from those who are knowledgeable Allah, and, Allah. And, and, and spread Islam to everybody mm. and, and be of those who everyone looks up to. And, and well, I'm, also, I'm so happy, man. Well, I'm yeah. so happy, man. I don't, I don't know how to express it. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. subhanAllah, yeah. Allah, man. I got mad love for you, bro. Yeah. Allah, yeah. SubhanAllah. Allah. But I just want to say to like, to, 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 I just want to say as well, Allah, like, I swear by Allah, anything yeah that that you know that that's that's you know that's that's that you're finding it hard to give up yeah mm. and it's and it's bad and it's something that's evil you if you give this up wallahi allah will give you better yeah. some allah yeah. would replace that or something better mm -hmm. like that's one thing that a lot of people don't have that kind of like that like that talk like that rely like that reliance mm. so it's like like I'll t i'm gonna tell this story quickly Perfect. and you know I've, I've never really even said this to nobody but I'm going to drop it here live first. The one you told me the other day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Yeah, I'll drop it live this, first. This, I, I heard you this, this talking about it like, 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 I heard you talking about this epic listen, story, you know, I thought but to I'll give it to you. I'm trying to hear what the story is. It needs to be like a short film. Actually. You know, because, <laughs> you know what it is? Because, you know what it is, yeah? A lot of people, a lot of people, literally, they always message me and say, you know, Suleiman, like, I understand that like, rare, like, you know, you stopped at that stage and you stopped doing this and et cetera. But 
Like, what am I going to do if I start practicing now? Like, in terms of money, like, what am I going to do in front of this? Like, you know, in terms of this. So, one thing I told brothers, like, when I first stopped doing music and now I've, I've stopped, yeah, I got a job at Amazon. So now I'm working at Amazon, I'm doing deliveries. Hard job. You're moving like 200 boxes. <laughs> yeah. I remember this time. Yeah, so yeah, I'm doing like a hard, just... I'm doing like literally hard jobs, bro. Like I'm literally praying on the roads, praying on the grass. And I made a promise. I said, Ya Allah, now that, I start, now that I'm trying to like, you know, I've changed my life, I'm not going to miss one salah. One salah I'm not going to miss. So I made that promise. So I remember me parking up in a van. I'm in the countryside. I'm praying on the road. Next I'm praying, <laughs> praying next to the sheep. I'm praying <laughs> literally everywhere. Like it was literally, it got deep. Then... I, 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 one day I had one package and I and, and in my head I had kind of had a feeling that I'm, there's alcohol in my van. Uh, yeah. So I was kind of thinking, oh, is it allowed? So I'm going to the sheikh in my masjid. I'm saying, you know, I've got alcohol inside my car. I think so. Like, do you get it? Because Amazon sell alcohol. Uh, and there's some items when you take it to the, to, to the, the people you're delivering it to, it says only plus 18 can kind of accept this item. Mm. And what's, what's the only thing they're going to accept? That's plus 18, like alcohol and yeah. et cetera. So that I kind of was trying to play oblivious like, to it, innit? To one day, imagine I'm delivering a parcel and it drops on the floor, alcohol comes off my whole, everywhere, alcohol's on the floor, I can smell it, my whole van is smelling of alcohol. Ah. I thought, ah, oh, this is a sign. I looked, I said, you know what? I'm going to leave this job. And I was getting like, like good anyone money. that worked at Amazon that knows, you get like a good, like maybe like six bill a week. Oh, wow. So at that point well, I was thinking, yeah, and I was thinking, yeah, I'm living good right now. Oh, that's, so that's a lot of money. I left Amazon now. I'm thinking to myself, oh, at these times now, I was on the verge of, I was preparing to get married. Mm. Yeah. So right now I'm thinking to myself, okay, fine. Like when I left Amazon, Amazon now, who rings me? Imran. Mm. Randomly. Yeah. Salam alaikum. Yeah. I said, alaikum salam alaikum. Alaikum salam alaikum. Alaikum salam alaikum. Imran, you're right. Da, da, da. He said, look, we're going Umrah. This, this, that. Yeah. He said, we're going Umrah. Except this is that. Bro, you need to be there. I figure, yo, bro, no, 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 bro, you need to be there. Everything's like, yeah, yeah, come, come, you're going to need to be there. You get, I'm figuring, oh my days. At these times, I'm trying to pattern up, I'm trying to get my, I'm trying to do my thing. So now, I go to Umrah. I went to Umrah now. I'm with Umrah, I'm with the brothers. You know what I mean? Like, such a, the best trip of my life. Like, literally, I, like, there's nothing that I could, like, to this day, I think about it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, to this day, I think about it. Like the brother with the vibe, just being next to the Kaaba, you know, being where the Prophet Ali Salatu Wasalam and the companions and everybody walked. You're there, like, you know, it's a beautiful feeling. So now I come back now, a lot of things opened up. Doors was opening up. Like, you get it? Things was going well with, like, in terms of, like, my path. But then at this time now, I never had a job. I've come back. I'm about to go and get married in, like, three, four months. I'm thinking, yo, I need, I need to get a job ASAP. Yeah, one of my friend holl hollers at me. He says to me, "Yo, I got a job there, and it's a delivery job now." Yeah, ah. so he's like, "I got a delivery job. You get about the same money, like six bills a week." This is the I said, "Ah, right, cool. Let's go." I went there. I went to the place. They gave me the job. Long they day. said, "Yeah, yeah, mate." They went there. They liked me. Yeah, I just have to have a little bit of the gift of the gab. Yeah. They said, "Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got the job, mate. Yeah, all right, cool. Boom. You start tomorrow." I told my friend, "He said, yeah, yeah. It's all right, cool." Next day now, I even asked him, like, yo, do they sell alcohol or anything? He's like, no, nah, no, nah, everything's blessed. <laughs> everything's cool. So now, I, you know, I've started this in the morning. I prayed Fajr upstairs now, come back downstairs. And then my brother's like, yeah, look, that's normally your van, but you're going to train with me. First day, come jumping with me. He's loading up bottles of alcohol. Ah. I'm looking, I'm saying, what's going on? I thought you told me there was no alcohol. <laughs> then he said, ah, oh, nah, you know, it's sometimes this happens. And when uh, it does happen, because obviously the company's got a contract uh, with these kind of, I'm saying, nah, 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 nah. I said, I literally, I imagine my heart, you know, when you got that belly feeling yeah. in your stomach, when you're thinking like, ah, oh. uh, <laughs> literally, I just walked off. Uh, I walked off and I'm walking, walking. I remember me walking and wallah, I, I literally got so emotional. I remember me so emotional saying, yeah, Allah, look. I could stay right now. I could stay right now at this job and get this money. But yeah, Allah, I'm leaving this for your sake. I'm leaving this right now. I don't want to like, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to disobey you. You know, when you leave something like big and stuff like, you don't want to do this kind of, you don't want to be sneaky. Stop. I said, yeah, Allah, I'm leaving this. And I'm you, and you're going to do something big. You get married and stuff like that. You want to start off, you know, mm. in khair. Mm. I'm saying, yeah, Allah, I'm leaving this. Yeah, Allah, I'm going to put my trust in Allah. Boom, I left that job now. One of my friends now, <laughs> long story short, another one tells me, yo, there's a job. I'm, I'm looking for a job quick. Yeah, because now, now I've got a bit of money saved already. I've seen a bit more as well. So now he tells me, yo, there's a, like, a, like, like a, a, a restaurant job, yeah? Where you're working in a restaurant. I thought, restaurant, cuz. 
There you get me, yeah? <laughs> then I thought, you know what, I don't care. You get it? I thought, you know what, I don't care. Come, let's go. He goes to a restaurant in Kingston. I said, let's go. I met up the guy, the guy's a Muslim guy. Hey, you want to start? Come. <laughs> Boom, I started the top now, yeah? So now I'm doing the deliveries, yeah? I'm doing deliveries, etc. Ah. The guy liked me and he said, look, Suleiman, I want you to be like the, like one of the like main guys of the shop. Look after the shop when I'm not there. I want you to do night shifts. So now I'm doing night shifts that I'm telling the, you know, I'm with the um, like the guys who are chefing it up and et cetera. I'm just there in it, yeah? Sometimes I'm, I'm even helping them out with like deliveries and stuff like that and stuff inside the shop, stuff like that. Uni students start coming in. Mm. I, well, I swear that's so low. No <laughs> yeah, get it. And imagine the humility as someone yeah. who, like, you know, normally, like, if you're a rapper, someone who's known yeah. and you'll be seen behind the counter. Yeah. You get it. But in my head, I'm thinking, like, like I'm looking, I'm thinking, like, well, I, I actually don't care. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I actually don't care. Because, right, well, I, you have to have that mind state where you think, Ya Allah, whatever position that you put me in, yeah, I'm going to stay on that. Mm. I'm going to be on that. Mm. I'm not, I'm going to. Uh, I'm alive right now, you're alive right now, we're both gonna die. You understand? So I remember at that point, I looked and I said, look, this, look at this test. I'm in the shop, it's halal, right? It's a halal shop I'm working at. The guy, the manager lets me pray my salah. Say, Yalla, yes. <laughs> Even the subhanAllah, he never used to, it was hard in that shop, people never used to pray like that. Yeah. But I'm praying my salahs in the back of some raggedy shop, yeah? But I'm so happy. Right. I'm praying my salahs, I'm doing my night shift, getting my little bit of money, Alhamdulillah, Ramadan comes in. Mm. Remember, I'm doing night shift now. Yeah, yeah. So now, Maghrib is when I start, just before Maghrib. So I'm going to be breaking my fast in the shop. I'm praying Isha in the shop. I'm missing Traweh, Qiyam al Layl, Fajr, Kulhum, <laughs> everything, <laughs> basically. <laughs> you get it? So now I'm thinking to myself, Subhanallah. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking to myself, like now, first day came in, I had some feeling in my heart. I never felt this feeling before, bro. That was just one day, one day. Yeah, the first day of Ramadan. Fuzzy, that came in because I'm still working. Ah. And I was like, oh, I'm doing night shift. First day, it just hurt me so much because Ramadan's the time where us brothers link up in yeah, the masjid. Yeah, yeah, what yeah. feelings better than Ramadan? In the masjid, night time, Qiyam al layl with the brothers, eating, barisan, um, uh, and, and hilib <laughs> <laughs> in Darul Salaam. <laughs> you know what I mean? In Qubba, Darul Salaam, all these masjids. <laughs> so what happens now? I went up to the boss and I said, listen, bro. I said, I said listen, listen. Um, I don't want to say his name. <laughs> I said, listen, yeah. I said, listen, it's Ramadan. And he's like, uh, I said, I can't do this no more. And he was like, you're the one that needs to be here though. I said, look, I'll be honest with you, you need to find someone ASAP, this is that. He was like, but you're running a lot of things. Cause I was doing a lot of, I was helping him out a lot, like with uh. the deliveries, everything. I said, listen, please find someone ASAP cause I'm gone, I need to go. That first night, well, look at that. Look, a lot of the times before that, it was a lot of patience, isn't it? I went, uh. that job, that job, Ooh. that first night I left. Wallahi, I went to the masjid. It was night shift. I remember I left about maybe about 12. Where I, I got so emotional. I'll never forget that day. I left that uh, shop that I was at and I went straight to Darul Salaam. Darul Salaam, they pray Qiyam al layl the night prayer, every single night of Ramadan. Normal masjids, they pray the last oh, 10 nights. Last 10 nights yeah. So I went to Ramadan. I went, I went, I'm doing night shift now, but actually in the masjid. Yeah. <laughs> so, I went, yeah. so now I went to the masjid so happy because all of the other brothers, Abd and uh, you know, um, the Bilal and all these brothers, they, they, they lead in the masjid. So I went there. I went there, I'm praying. Qiyam al-Layl finishes. Now we're gonna have like little like suhoor, yeah. We're gonna eat some suhoor, yeah. So now we're sitting down and then I meet a, 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 one of my uh, Asian friends, yeah. I met an Asian brother called Nukman. I'm gonna say his name, I'm sorry to yeah. shut <laughs> to <laughs> you up. But amazing brother, look. First time I ever met him, he defer I've never seen this brother before. First night, this is the night I left the job, yeah. First night I met this guy. He said, Salam alaikum, you're right. Alaikum salam, this is that. He sat down, I gave him a banana. Yeah, is it, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause I, naturally, <laughs> is this the, the Somali thing? I just, I just went like that. Because yeah. <laughs> we're having rice, and he went, he was a bit, and I said, Oh, oh, my bad. I said, Yo, I said, Have you ever tried banana with rice? He was like, yeah. He was like, Nah, nah, I, I ain't ever tried it before, innit? So then now he's he's tried it now, and he's like, I respect it. <laughs> he can relate to he can he can write that scene. He's, he's, like, I respect he's it. gonna laugh exactly what he said. He said, I respect it. I like the fact because it's it's not a fact of like he didn't like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or he liked it. He just said, I respect it. He understood it. He understood, <laughs> he understood it. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So anyway, straight away he asked me, like, you know, what's your name? I said, Suleiman. He said, What's your name? He said, Not man, isn't it? So afterwards he told me, Yeah, mashallah. He said, um, brother, what do you do? Randomly, look. Straight away he just asked me, What do you do? I ignored no, no, I, I, I never heard it. I was just like, yeah, I, who was that banana? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, cause at that point there, I just left my job. I just uh, left that job. Mm. He carried on, he, he came up, he came back to me and he said, yo, 
it's a brother. Um, do you know anyone that can like teach Quran and etc. Like, you know, I want to learn Quran and stuff. I said, yeah, give me your number. I know some brothers. So I gave his number to, you know, uh, like I said, Look, come meet me in the masjid. As soon as I met him in the masjid, long story short, I met him in uh, Quba the next day. He's telling me, yo, bro, what do you do? He kept on telling me. I said, you know, like, you know, I do a couple of jobs here and there. <laughs> 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 you know, I do my little, yeah, what's going on though? <laughs> you get it? Then he was just like, um, yeah, bro, like, you know, I do IT and ah. I've got kind of a like, you know, I've got a nice job, I do IT. And at this time I was kind of studying IT myself okay. in terms of like behind like closed doors. Like I was kind of like looking into like, ah. you know, CCNA and uh, okay. CCMP and A plus and all this kind of stuff. Like, I, even though I never was onto that, but I was, uh, that was a field that I was kind of looking at, like, you know, looking at IT, but I thought it's kind of far fetched because I never went uni and all this kind of stuff. Mm. So he was like, look, I do IT. I work at this job place. I can get you an interview and I'm going to teach you about my job. Oh, wow. You get it? Mm. You teach me somebody that's going to teach me Quran. You wow. show me somebody that's going to teach me Quran. And in the masjid, I'm going to teach you, I'm going to get you an interview at my job. And then you show me somebody who teaches me Quran, I'm going to get you an interview at a place at my job. And I'm going to teach you what to say in the interview and everything. SubhanAllah. So he's in a masjid learning Quran. And then after, you know, we're, all, we're, we're doing our thing in the masjid. Straight afterwards, just before Maghrib, He's taking me into a room. He's saying, look, they're going to ask you. They're going to, you know, this is what's going to happen in, you know, interview. This is the good things that you need to do, etc." He's, he's teaching me. I got the, uh, I went for the interview. Done the interview now. Five days, uh, five, six days before I got married, I was still kind of like, you know, d doing like. Oh, wow. See, so actually on the verge. Yeah, yeah, literally. The money, this like, stress, literally, bro. Like, this six, is stress. Yeah. Like a week before I got married now, I was thinking, I can't, I'm not going back to that night shift job. Yeah. I, you can't be married going back to night shift. So uh, seven days before I got married, the IT company and it was some proper Allah Mubarak. Just see Allah Mubarak, yeah. Allah it was Mubarak. like a nice, yeah. Allah it was a Mubarak. nice little IT space pro job. I came from lifting big boy boxes mm. and stuff. You get it? So you know they rang me and they said, "Hi there, Suleiman, you're right." Da -da -da, et I said, "Yeah, I'm good. I'm going to say, yeah, we just called to. I just came at the message to pray the Lord. We just called to tell you you got the job." Wow. I thought, look at that. <clears throat> yeah. I thought, look at that. So it's just like I just wanted to, to to literally just tell that story and to share that story for all of the people that message me and say like, you know, like if I leave. This, you know, if I leave what I'm doing now, trapping or this, this, that, or like I never had an educational background, like things are not gonna. Well, like Allah will provide for you from places that you've that you you can't mm. ever imagine ever. Mm. It's for a girl and boy, like every single, like literally, you just have to stay patient. Some people happens faster, mm. some people happens longer, but it happens about. It's just about staying patient. And after that, Alhamdulillah, my life just blossomed like to a point where I met so many brothers, like so many brothers, and this life just got real. So I just want to share that story. Yeah. Anyway, you like know what's very story. profound about that story? Mm. Is that there's so many things there, but there's one thing that's very deep. Is that there was a big connection between you and the masjid and getting the job. Mm -hmm. As in you found the guy <coughs> at the masjid. Yeah. He taught you at the masjid. Mm. Your love with him increased at the masjid, which allowed, which was the reason for him to take the next level. You are on your way to the masjid. You get a phone call. Previous yeah. jobs, you're meeting brothers at the masjid in salah. You know what that's deep? Because in the Quran, Allah said, uh, Allah said, Command your family to pray and be patient on the prayer. Then, right after that, Allah said, We don't ask you for rizq, rather, we will provide for you. Look at that. So, scholars took from this ayah that there's a relationship between praying your salah and Allah giving you rizq, Allah providing for you. So, people are strong in their prayer, Allah will provide for them. There's another example of this, you know, in the story of Maryam. Uh, the mother of Jesus, the mother of Isa. Mm. So Allah said, uh, كُلَّمَا دَخَلَ عَلَيْهَا زَكَارِيَ الْمِحْرَابَ وَجَدَ عِنْدَهَا رِزْقًا The Prophet Zakaria, he was basically a guardian over her, taking care of her. Every time he would come to her, where she was in her place in the masjid, وَجَدَ عِنْدَهَا رِزْقًا Allah said he would find with her these fruits, this rizq, and, this, and the tafsir mentioned that these are fruits from different seasons. So imagine winter fruits in the summer and summer fruits in the winter. And obviously yeah. now they process the food and they do yeah. all these things to kind of preserve it. <laughs> but imagine, bro, in the winter time, you're smacking a mango. Mm. Wow. Winter time, you're eating dates. Wow. That sh she had fruits that were being brought to her from different seasons in the alternate season. Do you understand? So imagine that now, imagine now, bro, if you see a mango in the summer, you're not going to think too tough. But imagine, mm. bro, like, in them times, you see, a man you see someone smacking a mango in the winter. But you're gonna think, whoa, yo, what's going on? Yeah. So, so, uh, he said, he, he said, Marim, what is this? What is this? Like, where are you getting this from? She said, this is from Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides for whoever he wills 
without any accounting. Mm. The scholar said, again, because Mary, what was she doing? She was always praying in that place in the masjid. Mm. Where she was in a masjid, she was praying. And because of her salah and a deep connection to Allah, Allah was providing her rizq, mm. which is taking care of her. Mm. She, she, was just, she was just out there praying. Ya Maryam Qunuti, Li Rabbiki, Wasjudi, Warka'i, Ma'ar Raki'in. Oh Maryam, pray, do sujood, do ruku. Maryam was praying. So when she was there, he said, so where is this coming from? She said, this is, this is from Allah. He's mm. providing. So now Zakaria becomes inspired. Mm. He's, like, yeah. He's like, yeah, you know what? Allah does provide. And he provides without any hisab. Mm. Like he really wanted a son. And he's struggling for a son. He's an mm. old man. His mm. wife can't even have kids no yeah. more. But he wants a son mm. that could be an heir to his prophethood. And he can carry on the prophethood. So we say, هُنَالِكَ دَعَى زَكَرِيَّ رَبَّهِ He makes a dua. قَالَ رَبِّ هَبْ لِي مِنْ لَدُنْكَ ذُرِّيَّةً طَيِّبَ إِنَّكَ سَمِعُ الدُّعَى He said, my Lord, give for me a lineage, offspring, that's going to be pure. Give me a righteous son. And you're the one who listens to the prayer. Okay? Allah. Now look at this. فَنَادَتْهُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ وَهُوَ قَائِمٌ يُصَلِّي فِي الْمِحْرَابِ أَنَّ اللَّهَ يُبَشِّرُكَ بِيَحْيَى مُصَدِّقًا بِكَلِمَةٍ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَسَيِّدًا وَحَسُورًا وَنَبِيًا مِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ Allah. Allah said in the very next ayah he, mm. he was in prayer He was in salah The angels came to him and said Glad tidings to you Allah is giving you a son His name is going to be Yahya Wow mm. He's in salah In salah Subhanallah So أخي look at that there's a connection between Wallahi, there's a connection between the salah mm. and money. <coughs> salah and children, salah and woman. Yeah. A, a man wants to get married, you'll pray. Mm. You, bro, like you're, you're trying to get money by running away from the salah. You say, bro, I, mm. I, I'm, I need to get paid so I can't pray my Jummah prayer. Bro, I need to yeah, get, yeah. you know, I'm sorry, I have to miss out these prayers. I can't go to the restaurant and pray because mm. I got work to do. But, bro, you're running away from one who's got the, who's got the risk there. I'll tell you a funny story that happened to me. There was one, one time my brother, old, he had to give me some money. Mm. And I was like, it was my money. I really needed it that day. While I was peak, I had some bills, everything to pay. I'm messaging, 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 messaging. He's airing me. Mm. He's airing me. Mm. And uh, bro, now I'm praying my salah now. I pray my, I pray my isha. I pray my isha now. And when I pray my isha prayer, what happens? I pray my sunnah now. As I'm praying my sunnah, so you know you got more, have you got manzo? No, yeah, you know, Monzo. Yeah. You know, you get that. Yeah, I heard yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're paying your and you heard. <laughs> Bro, I'm praying. This is how I went to Salah. I had a little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I said, wow. Yeah. That better be wow. incoming, not outgoing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, <laughs> no, I said, I said, wow, wow. Anyways, it just, and it just, uh, it just, it just, it just, well, like, if you think, like, in the Quran, even like, there's that specific verses to show you the relationship between Salah and money yeah. and, and risk. But he just overall. There's a relationship between what? There's a relationship between worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and money 100%. and risk. Because you know the ayah where Allah told you our purpose in life? There's an ayah in which Allah tells us the purpose why He created us. He said, Allah said that I didn't create the humans and the jinn for any reason except that they should worship me alone. That's the That's reason it. why we was created. Mm. Now man's going to say, yo, listen, if I'm all day every day worshiping Allah, like who's going to provide for me? Hmm. Look what Allah said in the very next part of the, of the surah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, hmm. Allah said, Allah doesn't want you to provide anything for him. Hmm. Allah is not going to get any rizq from you. Allah is not going to earn anything from hmm. you. You can't do anything for Allah. Allah <coughs> created you to worship him alone. That's for you to worship him. Yeah. But he doesn't benefit of you. Rather, he said, In Allah, who are Razaku, Vulku, what in Matin? Rather, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one he provides. So, yeah. straight away, Allah told you, Your job is to worship me alone, my job is to provide for you. That's what I realized as well, though, yeah, is that I spent so many years in music, everyone, there's this word of like purpose, like, what's your purpose? Yeah. And like, so many years running around in this circle trying to find my purpose, bro. And it's in the Quran already. Allah. You know what I mean? I'm chasing this, like, what's my purpose? I'm thinking my I'm running around telling everyone I'm here to inspire people. I'm meant to inspire people through my story and this is what I'm here for. Like this is my purpose in life and my purpose is in the Quran already. Well I 100 percent and, you know and, I mean? and you know what the shocking thing is? That you're abandoning your purpose mm. to look for a new one. To look for a new one. Wow. And what that is is what money, yeah. uh, identity, whatever it is, Allah already has that for you. Yeah, your yeah. identity is your Muslim. There is Allah yeah. already has. You know what shocked <coughs> me? There's, there's a book. By uh, Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab called Kitab al-Tawheed It's a very famous book And the book just goes to the explanation of La ilaha illallah 
And there's a section in there where he's teaching people to only pray to Allah. He's saying, don't, there's a chapter about only ask Allah for help. Don't ask no one else for help. Don't ask no one else for help. Only ask Allah for help. And he brings a verse that I never understood until I studied it. And then it be, and it shocked me like how serious the Sheikh's thinking was why I put that verse there. There's a verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَبَتَغُوا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ الرِّزْقَ وَعْبُدُوهُ Search from uh, the verse Allah is saying, seek rizq, seek provision. What you're looking to be provided for money, children, women, whatever it is, husband, whatever it is, Allah says, search rizq from Allah and worship him alone. This ayah is deep because if you look at it, this is something that Allah is telling us, Prophet Ibrahim, Abraham is saying to his people, he's saying to them, that these things that you worship besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala These things that you worship besides Allah Othan and these gods okay, These things and he describes them These things that you worship besides Allah They don't own any risk for you They don't own anything for you okay. Rather it is only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that will provide for you So seek provision from him and worship him alone mm. You know what is profound? It's because there's another ayah in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the people that worship their own desires. Mm. Allah said they worship their own desires. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So, so, so Allah said, uh, man ilahahu hawa. Have you not seen the one who took his own desires as a God? He worships himself. He worships himself. So what that means is that he worships his desires. If his desires is music, if his desires is women, if his desires is money, he's going to worship it. So if it's a woman, he has to sleep with her. He can't control himself. You know, he, has, he just thinks with his genitals, bro. You know what I'm saying? He's like, woman, I have to sleep with her. Mm. There's money to be made, but I'll do it. What would you need me to do? You need me to rob something, to stab something, to sell something, you need me mm. to take away another person's life selling drugs so I can make them. He, bro, he just, he follows his desires. You know what I'm mm. saying? So he, 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 he calls upon other than Allah for rizq. Mm. He seeks rizq from the music game, from the devils. You know what they say? You sold your soul to the devil. Like they do all these things for what? Money. Mm. Akhi, it was all that Allah was going to provide for you. Mm. To the point where, akhi, look at this ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِذَا زُلْزِلَتِ الْأَرْضُ زِلْزَالَهَا وَأَخْرَجَتِ الْأَرْضُ أَثْقَالَهَا On the day of judgment, there's going to be a violent earthquake and the earth is going to spit out that which is inside of it. What is it going to spit out? It's going to spit out the treasures that were in there. Mm. You know why that's deep? People will live on the earth, use the earth, Raid it for its resources, spend all the money, die, new people come, spend the resources from the earth, hmm. die on the day of judgment, the earth will still have so much left in it that will spit it out. Hmm. As in, gold, Allah if it's gold, silver, precious metal, what it might be, but the earth has got what? It's got a rizq in it, it's got provision in it. It's not gonna run out. It's all it's all there. But you know what it is? It's in Allah's hands. And Allah gives to whom he wills. Hmm. And he takes from whom he wills. You know what I'm saying? And someone might ask, but there's people that are far away from Allah and I see them living it up. Yeah, yeah. a lot you know, of people say that. Uh, two answers to this. Number one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, For them people who turned away from the signs of Allah, I said, Allah said, Fatahna alayhim abwa kulli shay. Allah said, We open the doors of everything for them. Let them have success. You know why? It's a punishment for them. Because yeah. they're going, you know how you said, both of you said, if I, I realize um, if I go deeper, it's going to be harder mm. to get out. Yeah. So, so because they were turning away, they never wanted it. Mm. Allah let them go deep. Mm. Deep You got it all basically Deep yeah, yeah To the point where they're not mm. going to come back anyway And Allah mm. says for them Allah said Hatta idha farihu When they're in the peak of their enjoyment Allah mm. said Baghtatan We're going to grab them But they look at it as a blessing though They look at it mm. as a blessing yeah. But they don't realise that their time's coming Because mm. any minute Angel death's going to take yeah, their soul true. And that's it They're gone now yeah. But you see And the second thing is But do you think they're enjoying it? No But look You know one thing Stress. I never one, one thing that was That's clear to me Is that any guy Who's got money Women Respect Cars Jewels Whatever he's got And then he also Spends a significant amount of time Becoming intoxicated Wallah He doesn't enjoy his life You know yeah, why? True, 100% Because bro You need this sign Like the, the money The girls didn't bring you happiness You yeah. had to get drunk You had yeah. to get high To enjoy the moment Yeah so 100%. it's not inner within itself, you know what I'm 110%. saying? So they're not enjoying it anyway. And that's why I would the people who are watching, like they need to understand here. Like you got brother Solo here, you got brother Muhammad here. Like these brothers were in this game, you know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. shows, this that you saying what was minimum someone starts and gets paid what a rack. That's shit, that's like a new rapper too. That's like if you just come through, like you just if if you got to a level where promoters are shouting you and mm -hmm. da, 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 yeah, that's that's where it starts. Mm -hmm. And it's just crazy money. People get crazy money for shows, you know what I mean? And you left mm. it behind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Did you ever feel like that though? Like to the point where, because like, you know, when you started working, mm -hmm. like, you know, when I start working, you think to yourself, like this <clears throat> money you're giving me monthly, like man used to get this 
like weekly. What, like, like, you for, get, like, like if, if you ever look at it, you know like, what? Like, like, does that ever make you feel? I don't know. I don't look at it that way, bro. Because a lot of people do. I though. could get me like I was getting music money for quite a few years, bro, mm. and it was good money. Mm. And really, when I look at it, it's like I didn't really do like nothing good came of it, bro. Yeah, just like just living. You know what I mean? Just feeling like, yeah, you can live, you can fly out, you can do this, you can do that. But it's like, I weren't even learning how to be money, li like financially literate. I, mm. I, weren't, I weren't learning how to make money how to save, work for how me. To invest. I weren't learning anything, bro, because yeah. I'll just do another show next week. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And that's how it always was. Because you know there's another show, you just burn that quickly. Yeah, you just burn it. And that's how a lot of artists are, like, really. That's, that's kind of how it is. When, it, when it's coming quick, it goes quick mm. as well. You know what I mean? But I just want to, just to touch on what Solomon was saying, your story as well, kind of like, there's an aspect of perseverance and patience in it too, because it's like, you never walked away from one job for the sake of a lot. Mm. You walked away from three. <laughs> and the first time you didn't get the, you didn't get the blessing yeah, straight away. Yeah. You went and got another job and it was the same alcohol again. And yeah. you could have thought like, What's going on here? I thought if I walk away from something for a law, you know what I mean? And you walked away from that and you got another job where they're selling alcohol again and it's, mm. you know what I mean? And you've gone to another job. Now you left that for the sake of a law again, gone to a third job and it's Ramadan, you can't go to the masjid. So you walked away from another one to now go to the masjid and meet this brother. Yeah. And then you I'm got a job night. that isn't even in alignment with the type of job you was applying for. Exactly. You was yeah. applying for warehouse, deliveries. You never felt like you had the IT, you know, brain to do that. Cause you, that's why you're applying for warehouse and the food place and that. And now you've gone and got a job that wasn't even on your radar, bro. Exactly, do you know yeah. what I mean? Because you walked away from three things for the sake of a last, so. Bro, beautiful. Uh, this, sorry, we can cut this part out if you don't feel comfortable mentioning it, but yeah. you're looking for a job right now, right? Yeah, 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 definitely. So you mind putting it out there right now? Boy, yeah, I can pull it out there still, man. I'm, I'm, you know, I've been, I've been, I've got like a little plan, mm. a plan that like I'm studying something, and it's like a one year course. By the by, the end of the course, I know what field I want to go into. Do you know what I mean? But at the moment, it's just yeah, it's about just earning some money to kind of finance so you myself. Know what? I'm sure there's someone stuff. listening right now that's got access to a good job. Yeah. So inshallah, the email, I put it on the screen. The CS session at gmail dot com, and it's below as it is anyway. And uh, man like Jimmy is going to receive the email. Just make sure in, in the that. subject you write job. Mm. In the subject you write job so we don't miss it out. Yeah? yeah. And I'm sure 100% there's someone there that's got access to a serious job. Serious. A good quality job. You see my brother Muhammad Shout working out. that yeah. real <laughs> business yeah. job. Yeah. That's what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah. And, 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 and there you got a brother come to the dean. He left behind music for the sake of Allah. You know what I'm saying? And, and you know what it is? We're actually demonstrating here mm. exactly what happened to you. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. so I'm confident someone's going to come through, inshallah. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, mm. and, that's, and, that's, and that's the beauty of Islam, bro. Yeah, that's, Islam. that's what it is, bro. 100%. You know what I'm saying? Because do, could, like, I, I don't know if a job's going to come from this, but if mm. it does, like imagine, bro, we yeah. didn't know each other prior to this. Yeah, exactly. Now we come, yeah. you, you just come from a job interview. Mm. You didn't think that there'd be job talks here yeah, or yeah, access yeah. to a job here. Come on, like, that's, mm -hmm. that's how that's you know it. only Allah is orchestrating everything. Yeah. Allah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, let true. me ask you a question before we end, yeah? Inshallah ta'ala. Um, what would you say right now to any brothers who are maybe trying to get into the music thing or still doing the music thing? You know, you still have friends, peers, colleagues who are still in that. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they're going to hear about this. They may even see it. They may see yeah. it all the way to the end. But if right now you can speak to them, once upon a time you was with them. <clears throat> you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? In terms of the joy that you feel now compared to what it was before. Yeah. Many of them are Muslim, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. What would you say to them right now, bro? Just pour your heart out to them. Chat yeah, to them so to room. anyone, you know, any anyone that's Muslim that's trying to pursue the music thing, it's like... It's such a temporary, even if you can describe it as joy, it's just so temporary. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's so temporary, man. And it's like, there's no fulfillment in it. It's just a constant cycle of trying to, trying to better what you did last week. But, you know, it's, it's just, I don't know, it's weird, man. It's just a constant cycle of just, it's like you're chasing your tail, man. Like a dog just chasing his tail around in circles. And it don't really lead to anywhere, you know what I mean? And if you are Muslim, like we... What I realized is I had to stop lying to myself. You know what I mean? Like I'm a Muslim, like I believe, this is what I believe, do you understand? I know the consequences for my actions. I know what I'm supposed to be doing. I know where I'm supposed to be and where I'm not supposed to be. There's no blurred lines. 
it's just about being honest with yourself. Do you know what I mean? Sometimes we try and say, okay, I'm going to do a bit of this, but a bit of that. Like, we know, no matter how much knowledge, like, we know what you're supposed to be doing mm. and what we're not supposed to be doing. Do you know what I mean? And I feel like the sh it's the shaitan that will kind of not want you to come closer to the deen. Because I started feeling hip hypocritical. I started feeling not worthy of the deen. Not worthy of the brothers, like the good brothers that I know. Oh, they don't want to hang around with me, like, do you know what I mean? I'm a rapper, like, they don't want to chill with me. Mm. I can't phone them and I ain't got nothing to say to them. Mm. And I'm doubting my knowledge, like, I ain't even got knowledge to have a real conversation with this brother. Like, mm. I'm, I'm not realising, like, I know how humble and welcoming brothers are. But because of this, the world that I was in, Shaitan is convincing me that the brothers would look down on me. Do you know what I mean? Knowing how, like, do you know how mad that is? Knowing how welcoming the brothers are, like, Shaitan convinced me that, like, don't shout, I don't want to shout, Isma, like, Ismail. Mm. Like, it got to a point where, like, do, do you know Ismail? Do you know Ismail? Nah, he told me about Ismail. Ismail. Oh, yeah. Such a good brother. Amazing this, brother, man. This is actually, to summarise my whole advice, will be to just go to the masjid, bro. It's just the biggest, like, reminder, even the smell of the masjid, bro. You know what I mean? I go there, went there, met brother Ismail, and he was like, he was helping me. This is a while ago. This is maybe a year and a half ago now. Do you know what I mean? He's helping me and he's like giving me, not, he's teaching me things and he's just like, you know, giving me dawah, sending me text messages, calling me like daily and just kind of, this was now my go-to guy as far as the Dean was concerned. So Do you know what I mean? So that. it was like that. But then when I would slip further back into music, I wouldn't answer the phone to him mm. at all. Not out of disrespect, but I'm back in that stage of, yeah. he don't want to hear what I got to say right now. Like, And it's like Shaitan is making, like my go-to guy in terms of Islam, the guy that's going to like bridge the gap for me, I'm avoiding him because I feel like I'm embarrassed of what I'm doing. But he knows what I'm doing. <laughs> and he wants me to change. Do you understand? He's actually trying to reach out to you. Yeah, it's like the shaitan will make you think you know I don't yeah. want to. Bro, it's like I got dirt on my clothes. You're the only man with the washing machine, but I'm too embarrassed to let you see me dirty. Yeah. So I now I can't wash my clothes. I can't do it, innit? So it's about kind of dropping the pride and like, wow. Kind of you have to kind of empty yourself a bit, like refresh your mind, bro. Do you know what I mean? So many things that we get accustomed to and get used to is not really our natural setting. It's just what we get used to. Having bare girls is not a natural, natural thing for a man. You get me? Having all this like chasing this, chasing that, having a hundred people around you telling you how sick you are and da da da. That's not a natural requirement for us to be happy. It's just something that you might become accustomed to, isn't it? Hundred percent. So when you get to step back and kind of empty yourself with those things, start implementing the Dean into your lifestyle, and just go to the masjid, man. That's the one advice I can you. Just go to the masjid. The mm. smell. The brothers, and the find everything. Ismail. <laughs> find the Ismail, and in the masjid, there's there's many brothers like Ismail. You know what I mean? Uh, with that said, you know I just wanted to say barakallah feet to both of our guests. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, Suleiman, I know you for a while now. Alhamdulillah, wow. Muhammad Akhi, I pray Allah Azza wa Jal, He allows us to stay in touch, and I mean. we only strengthen this relationship. I don't know if Suleiman already told you. But we're trying to take you to our next Umrah trip. Yeah, mashallah. I, I, heard, you, yeah? I heard about that. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. just want to just jazakallah. I can't, I like, I was in shock when you Get told me. Umrah. Really. <laughs> no, when you told me, I was in like so much shock. He yeah. don't even know, like, he because he texted me first. I told like, and then he said, oh, we're going to jump on the phone. Yeah. From in the space of him texting me to us getting on the phone, and he don't know how many people I called. Like, yeah. okay. <laughs> like I was so gassed. Yeah. Like. But it's that. funny because it's like, it's, it's crazy because the day you told me, I, I think I told you the other day, I hadn't heard of Five Star Umrah before. Mm. And he told, he mentioned it to me. And I remember later on just going through Instagram, just scrolling. Mm, mm, mm. And I came across this page, Five Star Umrah, I clicked on it. And I'm looking at like the, the page, like the brothers, the videos, the brothers there telling their stories. Yeah. Wallahi, I was, I was like, this is what he was talking about. Uh, this is definitely no. what this is the, oh, so, so you didn't even know. No, no I didn't know because Suleiman said, Suleiman said like, oh brother, you're going, um, inshallah, you're gonna go Umrah. Everything's gonna be sorted for you. You deserve it. That's what he said. Uh. And I've come across this page, and I'm looking through the videos slowly, one by one, looking at the videos, and I'm getting the same theme. It's like uh. this is a trip they've been taking on this trip because this and that. You know yeah. what I mean? And it's like I'm starting to realize 
And it's not like I could just scroll through the page and see. I had to watch the videos to hear what the brothers' stories were. And it's powerful. The brothers like us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's not, it's, it's mandem basically. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Man. Mm. But that, like I was drawn to that page and I literally watched all the videos. I remember going all the way down to the bottom because it's not like millions of posts on there. It's like, and I went all the way, watched all the videos. I'm seeing a brother saying how me and this brother used to run from the police together. Now we're here. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's another brother like you can tell, look at this brother's face and tell he's tough. He's a tough brother. Yeah. But you can hardly speak. He's like, he's like. Man, just emotional right now. Yeah. Like, biggie, there, biggie. But, He's my biggie. Yeah, but he yeah. was like, well, I shout you can biggie. tell this brother's not a like public speaker, yeah. brother. He's like, mm. you know what I mean? I can see. You know, you can look at a brother and just yeah. tell a brother's tough. Yeah. Like, and he's just so emotional and it kind of, it's just beautiful. Yeah, like, that, that trip will bring the soft and mm, mm, mm. Yeah. But like, it's going to be a beautiful That's trip. why I want yeah. brothers yeah. to really, really donate for these kind of like stuff, man. Like for these Umbra packages. For all the stuff that the that what's going on with like you know the you know the link belows and you know how the brothers are always pushing this like it's it, it literally it does a lot like it literally does a lot I've seen it firsthand myself like mm. the brothers that are really really putting in work over time and really you know linking brothers and putting brothers together and like you, like this is stuff that should be invested in. right now the massages are closed they're all closed. But then these opportunities are open for you guys to invest into projects like this. You get what I'm saying? So, like, wallahi, like, I just want to say, wallahi, jazakallah khair, Imran. And for all of the brothers, man, for all of the brothers here, you know what I mean? You lot are doing just amazing job, man. Amazing. For, like, yeah, all, good, for, all good from Allah, man. All brothers, the brothers. Yeah. Putting the work, man. Yeah, all of that. the brothers here, man. I want to shout out their names too much. They might get vexed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but brothers, yeah, man, Allah bless brothers. all you guys, man. Jazakallah khair, man. Alhamdulillah. Inshallah, like I said, it's going to be the first of many, man. First mm -hmm. of many. Brothers and sisters, appreciate you lot watching. Please share the video with someone that you think that could benefit, inshallah. Ta'ala. And like we said, inshallah, if you if anyone's got access to a job or got a link to a job or something, something nice for a brother, Mohammed, he's from South, uh, he's from London. Ideally, South London, I'm assuming, is going to be the most convenient yeah, yeah, for you. Yeah, yeah. South London, primarily. Please hook him up. Email us at session at gmail.com. And uh, on the subject, just make sure you write job. So we can show the brother some love, you know what I'm saying? <coughs> but let's say subhanahu wa ta'ala bihamdika shadu la ilaha illa anta astaghfiru ka atubu ilayk. Assalamu alaykum, peace. Yeah, bro, don't worry. Don't worry, akhi, inshallah. I'm going to take care of that for you. 100%, yeah? All right, inshallah. Assalamu alaykum. Take care. Who's the... There's some up sign in town, my brother. I'm up! Yo, no, man. Bro. Is that down, man? Yeah, I'm down, man, bro. What's up, bro? Hey, what? Listen, I heard you be spending hundreds of pounds on flipping cars and that for like for a flashy show. What's that all about? Yeah, bro, the cars is a way to lure the brothers in who like to who like cars and we talk to them about the dean. So why didn't you go to the masjid for free? But bro, have you not seen COVID? Massage aren't allowing lectures to be done. But bro, you're taking charity money and renting out cars. How does that even make sense? Would you be would that's you the opposite of that, bro? Would you be okay if I hired out a venue? Yes, of course. Why do you do that? Well, do you know how much venues cost? I called up the Excel Centre personally. For 10,000 people, it costs over £20,000. This car right here, we hired it out for £100. Do you know how many views we get on average on Ride Out? Over 10,000 plus. That's one P per view, where people are learning about Tawheed and Sunnah. Whereas if I was to hire out a venue, it would cost me £2 plus per person. This is 200 times cheaper than a venue. No, you're still wrong, bro. You're still wrong. Wait, bro. one second, bro. I swear this is our car. A booker. Is that you? I a booker. What a joke, man. Sorry, guys. I am booker for you. <laughs> Anyways, wanted to give you guys an update. One of the shows that we've got on our channel that's been popping is Ride Out. Alhamdulillah, it's opened us up to a completely different audience who would not be learning about the religion had it not been with Allah's permission for this show. People learn about Tawheed, learning about Sunnah, they're learning about Manhaj, and so many other important things. Guys, we're trying to take the show to the very next level. You guys have already seen what we've managed to produce on our channel already, Alhamdulillah. That's just in about one month of us having launched the new channel. Imagine that we could take it to the next level. Look, I wasn't lying when I said it's going to cost tens of thousands of pounds to hire out a venue to get, what, a few thousand people in there. We spend a few hundred pounds for a car every week and we get tens of thousands of views. And guess what? That's, inshallah ta'ala, going to all be on your scales in a day of judgment. All you have to do to be a part of this project is donate at the link below. That's right, just donate at the link below. Why would you not want to be a part of this process? Give a little something. 
You guys have supported us for hiring out venues in the past. I'm telling you, this is a more cost effective, cost efficient method. Do you know This basically is our new venue. Every Sunday, ride out, catch us. And like I said, if you want to support, donate the link below. Peace.